Hello and welcome to the Trade Decorator Festival, the virtual industry gathering for all painters and decorators out there. And today we've got a really exciting uh, video conversation to bring to you. Um, we're talking about apprenticeships in painting and decorating. So a number of initiatives have been launched to help support young people. Uh, you know, these are the group most disproportionately affected by the pandemic, helping them to get their first step on the career ladder. Um, so look, we're, we're going to explore um, this today and we mustn't lose focus on, on quality, you know, quality of, of apprenticeships. And, and we've got Mike Swan here, who is uh, the curriculum and quality leader at Dundee and Angus College. He's also training manager and world skills expert for painting and decorating. So um, in this session, we're joined by Mike um, and we're also joined by his apprentice, um, Callum Bonner uh, of, from, from Pristine Decor. And Callum was also the UK representative at the Skills Olympics in Russia last year. So really excited to talk um, with you, Callum and, and Mike. And we're going to discuss you know, why these skills competitions are playing such a, a vital role in attracting young people into the industry, into, into careers uh, in painting and decorating and in construction, um, and how you um, in the audience, how you can actually you know, use competitions like this uh, and ways to sort of upskill apprentices and perhaps people in the wider workforce. So, so guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Mike, could I, could I perhaps start with you and just ask you to, to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and your career? So far. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, thanks for that, Ben. Um, yes, my name is Mike Swan. I'm curriculum and quality leader at Dundee Angus College, as Ben mentioned there. Um, I first got into painting and decorating when I was uh, 15, left school at 15. Like everybody at my age, around about that time, I really wanted to get a joinery apprenticeship. Um, but um, when I went down the careers office, they gave me uh, an opportunity straight away to get an, uh, an interview for painting and decorating. And luckily, at that time, I, I, I got the job, and uh, since then, I've absolutely loved it. My first day on the job, um, my um, journeyman at the time said to me, Fraser Gibson said to me, that um, painters and decorators, they physically make the world a more beautiful place to live in. And since that time, that gripped me, that grabbed me. And I've just loved painting and decorating ever since. I've done my apprenticeship. Um, at Perth College, and during my time while I was doing my apprenticeship, I went on to do further studies at HMC and HMD in construction management. And whilst I was doing that, um, I was asked to come in and do some part-time uh, lecturing at Perth College, which I did do. And again, I absolutely loved that as well. Going back, training everybody and teaching everybody all the skills that I had learned, it just uh, it gripped me right from the start. So luckily from then, uh, I got a part-time job at uh, Perth College and part-time at Dundee College. And between the two, I made up a full-time position. However, a little bit later on, a full-time position came up at uh, Arbroath College in Angus on the east coast of Scotland. And I managed to get that as a full-time position. A few years later, um, Arbroath College and uh, Angus College in Arbroath uh, merged with Dundee College and then became Dundee and Angus College. Whilst I was doing there, I got, then got promoted to a, a more senior role and now I'm uh, currently the uh, curriculum and quality uh, leader in paint and decorating and construction uh, pre-vocational skills, uh, pre-vocational courses. <coughs> Whilst I was doing that, we got involved with a lot of skills competitions. Um, I've always been, I've always liked the skills competitions and I always made sure I put forward apprentices to these competitions and we were very, very successful. We got quite a lot of uh, regional uh, winners and quite a few uh, national winners as well. And we've got some of our uh, students that we were working with, they got into um, the Borough Skills squad, squad team as well. Yeah. From the success, just, just for some of the audience listening, you know, what are the yeah. what are the World Skills UK competitions? You know, does everyone uh -huh. know that's people who don't are not aware of it? Okay, the, the World Skills competitions are um, regional competitions that are set up by World Skills UK. Uh, regional skills competitions that then go on to a national final 
which takes place um, down in Birmingham in front of 72,000 people. If you're successful in these and do well in these, you can then be chosen to re represent uh, the UK to go, to go towards World Skills international competitions um, and also Euroskills international competitions. And then you can compete against other countries throughout the world to uh, gauge uh, how well your standards are compared to other countries. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and that's mm -hmm. where I want to bring, bring you, Callum, in, because didn't you, um, you competed last year, is that right? Will you tell us a bit about, about your journey, about how you got into, into the World Skills competition and your experience? Hi, yeah, thanks for that. Um, when I was 16, same as Mike, funnily enough, I left school and um, wanted to be a joiner. So, <laughs> but at the time, I would take any apprenticeship going because knowing that an apprenticeship was um, such a, it's a thing that will benefit you your whole life. Obviously, with getting your papers at the end of it, you mm. could do anything after it and then still go back to it as you were qualified. So then I got offered a painting apprenticeship that was with Cutmanshire Council. And then through that, I went to Force Valley College just one day a week for the four years through the apprenticeship. And in my first in my first or second year, I started just got picked for a competition, didn't think nothing of it. And then just, uh, I done well. I think I came first in like the, it was like the beginners competition. And then the next year I got put into the more advanced one and then I came, I think I actually came second in that competition. But because I had quite high marks, I still qualified to go to the national final in Birmingham, as Mike was talking about. So I went to the national final in Birmingham and then done done not too bad there, but I would have liked to have done better, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I came fourth, I think. I'm not really sure. I think, I'm sure it was fourth. And then, because it was over the mark to go into Squad UK, we went into Squad UK, where there was like five people picked to go, go to Squad UK, I think. But uh, it was shortly whittled down to just two, because people couldn't commit. It's a big commitment, and you have to commit your whole life to it. So then there was two of us, and then we, it was a battle against each other. Um, and then I got picked to go to Euro Skills. Um, didn't do too great at that, but that was we didn't hadn't trained really very much, so it was just kind of a bit of experience to be on that scale. Mm. And then went back into training, and then I mm. got picked mm. to went through this team selection in Ireland and got picked from there because I had a really good mark there to go to Kazan and had a few competitions internationally on the way. And what was that like compared to the UK World Skills Kazan? How did how did that kind of compare? It's uh, actually really hard to describe. Like the size of it is just absolutely crazy. Is it? Just the, the amount of people they are and just every different skill. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of. I don't think anybody would really understand unless you were there how big it actually is. Like it's massive. The amount of people that pass through the gates, like over over the yeah. four days, is just unbelievable. Yeah. Do you know the what? What are the numbers? What are we talking about? Do you know Mike or Callum? Oh, I'm not sure the exact numbers. Maybe Mike would know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, to give you some idea of what the World Skills competition is like, it's it's exactly like an Olympic sports competition. You've got an opening ceremony, a closing ceremony, and the competition in between. Um, the opening ceremony was um, attended by eighty thousand uh, in the stadium in Kazan. And the closing ceremony, again, was attended by over 80,000 in the closing ceremony in Kazan. And it was also attended by President Putin of Russia and the Chinese president as well. Um, so that gives you some sort of yeah. size of the scale of that. It's like attending and, a, an international sports match, isn't that amazing? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. The actual competition itself, um, on a daily basis, uh, if I do remember correctly, I think it was 150,000 people per day. Uh, coming to see that competition um, over a four-day period. So if you equate that to uh, Olympic sports, when you've got an Olympic sports stadium that can maybe hold 80, 90,000, you're getting 50, 60,000 more people coming to see that competition. So that's how huge it is. 
bigger than the knee camp, that's for sure. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, it's still it's still kind of Britain's best kept secret, to be honest with you. A lot a lot of people really know about it and they're slowly getting to know about it a lot more. Um but there's other countries out there, they, they cover the competition exactly like we cover Olympic sports competition. The same media amount of time of media, for example, France, they had uh, 27 hours of mainstream media uh, coverage and TV coverage for, to do that. So we are getting more recognition and in the next few cycles, hopefully, um, we'll be up there with everybody's head of the Olympics. Everybody's heard the Paralympics, and now it'll be the World Skills Olympics up there alongside within the next couple of competitions. All being I mean, available. I mean, and, and I want to just ask you, Mike, you know, this uh -huh. sort of competition activity, um, you know, how do you see this then? You know, how, what role does it play in raising standards in apprenticeship? Why is it sort of so important? It's so important because it gives the UK. Uh, a benchmark. We can measure ourselves on it. It's, it's okay you, us to now say, yeah, we're world class. We've got to prove we're world class. In these competitions, we can. We can prove we're world class. We can get up there. We can measure our standards against other countries' standards. Yep, are we better? Are we not better? If we're not better, we can start to improve and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all these skills and all these standards we can bring back in and we can feed back that into the apprenticeship systems and the national occupational standards, and then everything improves and everything gets better from there. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting, yeah. And, and Callum, how did you find, did you find you're quite well equipped to compete internationally? Yeah. How did you find the competition? You know? When it came to um, Kazan, yeah, I feel like I was um, ready for Kazan because I had really put the work in at home. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily enough, all my tools turned up. <laughs> Because some other contestants, their tools weren't too great in turning up. I know, so, just got stuck at customs or something. Yeah, it? well, one of them, did, none of their tools turned up at all. So I was kind of lucky that way. Oh, but man. yeah, with the training and stuff that I had put in, the extra, mm. I just I felt ready for it. Even though it's a really nerve-wracking time and there's a lot of pressure. So, so, how, like so how, did, how did you find out about it? How, how did you get in? Involved. Well, was, what training did you have? Did you you had Mike as a mentor? Did you? That? Yeah. So what we what we what you do is you when you first join Squad UK you have boot camps down at Loughborough College, okay. which is like for team activity to bond with the team and learn all about organisation, time management, all the stuff that in the background that nobody really really would think of. And then we had like on the run up to both competitions and just throughout the three years it was roughly one week of training per month so mm -hmm. i i obviously i'm about an hour away from where mike stays so i went up once for one week a month and stayed in dundee and went to his college at dundee and angus college and trained for a week solid uh, once a month so that and then closer to Bizan, I was at home every night practicing for at least an hour or two in my spare room, just doing designs on the walls and out in my garage, spraying doors and just whatever I could do just with the materials that I had. Brilliant, brilliant. And and have you I know because have you sort of encouraged other people to you know in the in the industry to kind of apply and to get involved? Well, it's kind, uh, as my say, it's kind of it's a big secret just now. Mm. Well, that's what it feels like anyway, because anybody you speak to about it they don't have a clue what you're talking about. But um, I was involved with sitting at Glasgow College, helping out some apprentices for competitions and stuff. So just trying to draw it in like all the apprentices' heads that you can go further and going to these competitions is a massive thing and it's just like fast track to your career so much. It's mm. so beneficial. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and what more do you think could then be done about attracting more young people into the into the industry, either the competition that, um, or... I think that, well, when I first done competitions, my college didn't have a clue what even mm. the national final was. So I think through colleges, I think they should be like promoting it more and trying mm. to get every different skill into competitions. I think that's maybe, a, there's a lack of that just now and probably TV coverage, etc. when Euro skills and um, when Euro skills and the world competition's on, because as Mike said, Every other country's the air on the te on the telly every day because mm. 
and and well, you see like all the TV cameras round about you when you were working. Plus, my mum was on the Swedish television, <laughs> um, getting an interview as well. So yeah, they just like. Brilliant. But I think they do it. They do it the right way, and kind of we're just a bit behind. I think. Yeah. Is that is that right, Mike? Do you look at sort of Sweden? Are they one of the other countries that excel a lot in in world skills or just in the industry um, generally? Yeah, most most of the countries uh, the, the, there's very little difference between the countries. The standards are that high, but you do get ones that perform a lot uh, constant, constantly well on the world stage, and certainly in painting and decorating, it's. Austria uh, are, are one of the top three, if not the gold medalists of the year. You've got France, who are uh, always top three as well. You've got Switzerland, who are always top three. Mm-hmm. And you've got some emerging nations that have not been long in the World Skills competition cycles. They've only sort of joined in the past uh, four or five, ten, four, five, six years or so, or six cycles, like so Russia and China. Um, who are really pushing the boundaries now. Their, their training systems that they've got in place are all geared towards raising the standards. In fact, they, they train to world skill standards. In the UK, we tend to train to kind of minimum standards. We've reached a minimum standard, whereas other countries are now looking at world skill standards and saying, no, we need to be training to these standards. Minimum standards is not enough. We need to train to maximum standards. So within the next few cycles, you'll see these imaginations come through, your China, your Russia, your Brazils are also, also very good, and your um, um, Asian countries, they are uh, excellent. So, yeah, the, the standards all... Lots of competition, yeah. Yeah, lots of competition, yeah. And, bring, and bringing it back to sort of the, you know, standards in apprenticeships, you know, why do you think that's... Um, that why we need to, why we need to look at that why we need to kind of raise it you mentioned you know we sort of train some minimum mm-hmm. standards at the moment why is it yeah. so important it's so important it's going to be so important now now that we're out of bre- uh, brexit has happened and obviously mm. with covid um competition is going to be fierce the competition is a part of life and mm-hmm. uh, you've got to be the best at everything that you can do to get these uh, jobs that you're going to need to get these uh, skill levels up um so raising the standards and keeping the standards as high as possible is going to be paramount uh, certainly in the next few years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and maybe could you tell us a bit then about your, your role as training manager? Um, uh-huh. now, you know, like how, how are you then helping to sort of drive and, and raise those standards? <laughs> yeah, well, all the standards that I'm seeing and all the um, uh, new things that I'm learning from other countries I'm bringing that back in and I'm feeding it back into um, my college level. I'm feeding it back into a national level as well. The World Skills UK are now developing a program that's called Centres of Excellence, where all these training managers can come and give um, master classes and um, spread all the group practice that we're learning and all the great standards that we're learning throughout the whole of the UK through a network of different colleges and training organisations. And that's quite an exciting time at the moment because this new initiative is just uh, starting off and it will grow within the next few years as well. So that is the master plan to bring back all the good practice that we learn and share it throughout the, uh, the, the UK. Brilliant. Okay, mm-hmm. that's good. great. Great. And, and, and kind of coming back to sort of today, Callum, you know, like reflecting on that experience, how do you think that's helped you with with launching your own business. Um, could, you, could you comment on that? I think it's helped massively just through, through the skill level that you learn over the, the time that you do the competitions, but not just that, uh, everything in behind the scenes that you learn as well. Like, as I said earlier, like down at Loughborough at the boot camps, it's, it's, you're there for a weekend, there's a lot of information crammed in, but a lot of the information can help you a lot in later life. Um, and it sounds well, like it's a bit more fun than just being like a regular sort of training thing, isn't it? It's like you're training for an event and a competition. And yeah, it's, sometimes you could say that it's a wee bit of fun, but uh, it's very stressful. Is it? It's really yeah. like, uh, it's, there's a lot of pressure and you've got to be strong and kind of push yourself to the maximum. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, like, with um, all the social stuff that's been posted out about me going to world skills being in like the local paper so much and stuff 
my name's kind of out there around about where I stay. So mm. if anybody really needs work done, they tend to like know to come to me usually. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great your reputation, your brand, isn't it? Like I guess you get it. A... So it's kind of it's going really good, and it's it was a big step, especially with everything that's happening there now, but. Um, I think it's been worth it so far anyway. Brilliant, yeah. Um, and so, sort of, back to Mike on, on on next year. I mean, obviously we've got coronavirus and things going on, but how are you sort of preparing? Next year's competition is in China, am I? Am I right yes, ne that? next year's competition is in uh, Shanghai in China. Um, so, fingers crossed, we're hoping everything is okay by, by then. Yet, yeah, But um, as far as training goes, at the moment, it's been extremely difficult, as you can imagine, to get face-to-face -face training. Um, I've got three competitors in the squad at the moment. I've got um, uh, a young lad, Lewis Boyle, from Bradford. He works for uh, Alfred Bagnalls um, and Sons. And I've also got Bridie Kilby from Leicester, who works for Gelson Holmes. And uh, another lad, Thomas Noel, Thomas no uh, Tom, he works for Steve William Decorators. The three of them have only had one face-to-face -face training session with me so far before we went into lockdown. Mm -hmm. And normally we've had five or six training sessions by this time, if not more. Um, so we've been doing a lot of things as remote as we can possibly do. Um, but there is a limit because we don't have the surfaces or the areas that we can work on. So a lot of the things that we're doing is just um, things like uh, I was been sending them information regarding uh, the tools and equipment they were using regarding spraying equipment so they can research that so they can get to know the, the equipment but not actually use it yet um, and I've been showing them little short videos and I've been stealing a lot from other countries actually as well so other countries post up little videos of what they're doing so I can pick them and then send them to um, the squad for them to look at as well. We are hoping to get our face-to-face -face training back up and running at the end of October, the beginning of November, uh, all being well. And uh, fingers crossed we can do um, back-ended training and, and condense it a lot more. Rather than spread it out, we condense it a lot more and still get the same amount of training days, but uh, hopefully um, it, it'll all be condensed in one place. Yeah. So yeah, it's been difficult, but um, we're still doing it. Some skills can lend themselves a lot easier. The computing skills in that, they're quite used to working with remote learning anyway, so they can manage that. But for us, for the practical skills and the painting decorating, it becomes a lot more difficult. Mm. And what could you, if you could sort of sum up, you know, for potential apprentices out there or for people considering this sort of thing, you know, what people like Callum, what, what do you think they really get out of the world skills? competition if you could sum it up for us uh probably, probably Callum to be able to tell you that better yeah. than me because he went through the system but what i certainly notice from the ones that do come through the system is their confidence level source it does completely source um Callum i hope you don't mind me saying this but when you when i first met you you were not the most common young lads uh, but Within a very short space of time, uh, the, the year and the year and a half that I met you, your confidence level just went through the roof, absolutely through the roof. So you get, um, your confidence level builds, you get a, a fantastic um, grounding regarding your uh, um, standards and your skill and your practical level. What you also get that you never mentioned before, Callum, is as well, was the, the psychometric training that you get alongside this as well regarding the um, health and fitness as well, because you get health and fitness training because you have to be physically fit to do a four-day competition. And you have to get be mentally fit to do a, a four-day competition as well. So alongside the practical training that I provide for Callum, uh, and help to organize for Callum. He also gets trained by Olympic um, sports trainers and sports coaches to deal with uh, physical fitness and um, uh, mental awareness as well to be able to cope with the pressures of that size of competition. So all the, the, the down at Loughborough, all the coaching staff are the ones that train the Olympic sports teams as well. 
we get trained alongside them too. So, brilliant! What a way to be able to access that sort of yeah community, that sort of talent. And you know, obviously, you know, Callum, you've started your own business, so it's a sign of your kind of confidence as well, isn't it? In the uh, you know, yeah. put, it, put it put it put it down to down to that. And what would you say, you know, to anyone potentially, you know, considering considering applying, considering getting involved? Um, and I should just mention, you know, it, it's run in partnership with the CITB and and Crown Paints. Just a, a shout out. Yeah, to yeah, Crown Paints and the CITB are, are um, fantastic. In fact, the, the amount of support we get from Crown Paints is incredible, and we simply couldn't do it without their support. So, uh, we'd like to thank them very much and use this platform to thank them. Uh, so, thank Brilliant. you for that. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Mike. So, yeah, Callum, what would you say to anyone aspiring competitors? Yeah, I just think that um, everybody, if they get a slight chance, is just to go for it and give their all because um, it can end you in places that you wouldn't even imagine. When I was younger, well, when I started my apprenticeship, halfway through my apprenticeship, I always kind of knew that I wanted to start my own, but it was always just a thought in the back of my head. And just um, going through competitions, gaining the confidence, learning all the different skills mentally, physically and skillfully, it's just, um, it's fast-tracked me so much and I didn't think that I would have been starting my own company by now, two years after my apprenticeship's finished, but uh, here we are and business is booming just now, so Brilliant. it's helped massively and I would just uh, advise everybody just to go for it and just put their all into everything that they do. It's a fantastic story. I mean, I I love it. I love, love just hearing about it. Um, wish you sort of all the success uh, in the future and thank you guys for coming on. Shall we just... Um, those with so people who are interested in this, how do they find out more? Um, they contact you, Mike. Do they go to the uh, a website or social media? What, where can you find out more if you're interested? Yeah, yeah if you can um, get interested in the competitions through um, getting onto the CITB website, uh, it's a skill build competition, which is probably formally known as. You can also get in touch with Royal Skills UK, look at their website and all the information is there and that will direct you to whatever skill competition you want to get involved with. If you're at an apprentice at a college, ask your lecturing staff, they'll be only too delighted to point you in the right direction, I'm sure, as well. So, um, yeah, that's probably the best avenues to go down. Yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. And um, good luck next year in Shanghai. Hope we bring home... Do they have medals? Is it? Um, oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Have you not got your medal where you call them? No. Uh, no. no. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah, Maybe next time. I can't remember if you mentioned that Callum won the medallion for excellence because uh, he reached the world skill standard, and he's also, although he plays a stone a wee bit, he can officially call himself the fastest painter in the world. Uh, because yes. we have a, a little spin-off competition when we're doing that as well. One of the elements that we do in the competition is a speed element and uh, you're measured on your time and your speed and the quality of work that you do at the same time. So um, Callum, uh, he actually won that element of the competition so he can call himself the fastest painter in the world. Amazing, the fastest <laughs> painter in the world. How long, yeah. it, can you give us a, a, a sense? <laughs> How long does it take you to paint? Uh, it's hard to pick a size area but what sort of speed are we talking? Is this Oh, well, it was, a, it was a design, so you get a design on a panel. What kind of size is that panel, Mike? Um, it's a uh, uh, 2.4 by a metre wide panel. Right. You get a panel that size, and then you have a design that you get handy with some sizes on it, and you get to use tape, and you've got to, from the buzzer goes, you've got to draw the design paint it all, take all the tapes off, make sure it's all perfect. And I think I managed to do it in about, it was not just maybe short of 40 minutes or just mm. over 40 minutes. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brilliant. It's it really takes me that long to just get, really some, <laughs> to yeah. get the masking <laughs> tape out and find yeah. it in the cupboard for me. But yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was actually the second, second fastest in time. But once we take the quality element into it as well, and then take the points off. Uh, somebody could be a lot faster, but make a, make uh, a lot of bad jobs, you see. So see. once the quality comes into it, we mark up the quality. It was quite far ahead of yeah. all the other ones. A bit that. like miss, missing a gate or something when you're going down yes. a, uh -huh. a run or, or, or something right. like that. That's oh, right. Yeah, brilliant. exactly that, yeah. It's been um, fantastic to get such, a, such an insight into this competition and into uh, uh -huh. your experience. And yeah. One thing I'd probably like to speak about just before we go, Ben, if that's yeah. okay, is... 
the actual cultural awareness as well with, with, with Callum, because what we do is we also arrange international pressure tests and go and train with other countries as well, not just in the competition. So Callum was away training with Hungarians, he's away train, training with the Chinese, the Austrians, the Russians, and uh, who else were you training with, Callum? It was oh, Russian, um, Chinese, Brazilian. Uh, that's right, yeah, Callum, yeah, Brazilian. Yeah, Brazilian. Yeah. So he's meeting all these other countries as well, and we're um, uh, forming relationships and friendships, and you've still got friendships uh, with the people you competed against now. So uh, it's also good for yeah, the, the cultural all, side as well. On social. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, brilliant. And, and brilliant, I imagine, in your business, you know, Callum, as well, like not just working with other, you know, British or other Scottish people, but, you know, you're going to be building teams which are, from different cultural backgrounds and that experience, yeah. I imagine, stands you in good Being able to adapt and overcome is just like one of the main things. Obviously, being in that situation before, it would help me being in that situation now, which is obviously massive if you have, like, say, customers or people that you want to work for you and stuff in the future. Mm. Brilliant. Well, guys, thank you so much. It's been a fascinating journey. I hope uh, you're listening. Um, at home have enjoyed this and do definitely get in touch with mike on this go to the citb um website and look at it or go and speak to your um you know your your, your advisors your lecturers and your um uh, apprenticeship um teachers as well because um like you say we need to kind of get the word out there and um we need to get more people through this fantastic competition um so thank you callum thank you mike so much for coming on um thank you time and yeah good, good luck next thank year Okay, thank Bye. you, Ben. Bye. Bye. Bye.